I often see you opening up your sketchbook and, and painting the locals. I love painting landscapes and it's what I do amongst uh, my figurative work, but I always base figure within the landscape almost to activate the picture in a way. So for me I sometimes need more than just the landscape. Painting locals and the people that actually inhabit that land daily gives me a reference point because I'm an outsider and it actually makes me feel a bit closer to what I'm painting and to the area and I feel like I'm actually engaged in that space or place. It's just personal things, what I need. I think I'm a people person. I sometimes can be quiet but I'm also quite gregarious as you know and I think you've made it into a few of my sketchbooks um, as well with the drawings. I think um, all of you have which is great to have these models around and, and I think part of these trips are also important because we spend a lot of time together painting. That's what makes it fun and enjoyable and if you're happy and you're really getting a kick from what you're doing it, it shows in the work. If I now look at one of Tim's paintings, I believe Tim is on check. Yes. In your work rare to see a figure mm -hmm. but it does strike me that an awful lot of your painting is about the mark making. Very you much want to so. just talk about that? The mark making has always been a big part of, of what I do. One of the things when I uh, did my masters was trying to understand that and placing that in the Western context of, of expressionism and I was understanding my work that I wasn't a pure expressionist I came through that tradition but I wasn't unmediated completely in that sense but then I brought in the idea of the Chinese brush painting tradition not in any way of saying I was influenced by that but but actually reading up on it in some way made me go there is an element here that I understand that is naturally in my practice and that was at the sense of the stillness and contemplation. The strength of the brush trick. Well it was the immediacy of the brush mark the complete commitment to the brush mark, but then the immediate stopping and holding back, and then being still and contemplating. So the contemplating wasn't a sense of planning the whole thing. It was still unmediated in that you, you launch into the canvas without having gridded it up or planned anything in that sense. But as soon as you put in the unmediated mark, you stop and think and hold back and think quite a lot before you do the next one. What was fantastic leading up to the Wang Shan trip, one of the artists I looked at was Xi Tao, the, the great individualist from the 1600s, 17, 18 years ago. So I looked at a lot of work, but the sense of where they had been created, I, I didn't have the background to, to place that. So I actually went back and looked at some of his work and went, oh, of course. You know where it is. Okay. Of course, you know, on Wang Province, Wang Shan. And I, I think, I like to think I've pushed that further in these works from my normal practice, in that there's still the huge range of immediate and bold marks and in fact I've actually used bigger brushes than ever, great big house painting brushes to really put down just a couple of marks. But then laying them one over the other occasionally very carefully and even some of the, the soft, the, I'm putting my hand in front of my face, even some of the soft, see I can't help making marks no matter what, even some of the soft sort of misty marks have been very soft and, and carefully made so there's that sense of the rawness and the careful coming together and the big challenge there is to do it in a way that doesn't look forced but that it's actually got both the stillness and the rawness. That's, that's what I'm, I'm hoping for. I like to walk the area and think the area and get to know an area first but then once I'm ready to paint I launch into it. In fact, proprietary sketches don't work for me. I, actually right. lo I lose interest. Right. But I look at uh, Pen. In fact, when I visited you at your home in Sydney last year, you came out with sketchbooks that you were doing at four or five, six years old, which were extraordinary. My father actually started that because he was thinking I'm too active. <laughs> yeah. So uh, actually, it's up to my earliest memory, I've been always drawing. And I remember in the weekends, my father took me out to the parks. The first thing I have to draw until he is satisfied, then I can play. And so what age did you start drawing? I think three f or four years. Three or four years. When you were four, those sketchbooks were <laughs> Yes, yes. You got um, worse ever since. <laughs> <laughs> I think the most important thing I learned from my drawing practice is uh, the coordinate works between my brain, my eyes and the hands. And to instantly capture the shape and not mending it too much. So when it comes to painting, there's the issue of you know when you need to stop. Lucien Frui, some of his paintings, he kept going for uh, 13, 14 months with incredibly thick layers. So he can keep going forever, but he has to tell himself when to stop. 
And actually, the Chinese masters in the past, they are the masters knowing when to stop. That's why in the scroll paintings, you see a lot of blank areas. They, they want the balance between the finished and the unfinished. Coming to this, like the mountain listener with the speaker there, I adopted the technique of classical Chinese perspective. So human eyes are basically a 50 millimeter standard lens. So you only see a section of uh, landscape in front of you. And in my paintings, I try to break that limitation. Human eyes are like scissors. You don't necessarily paint what you see in front of you. So you cut different sections of sceneries and you merge them into one space on the canvas, on the paper. Yeah. Okay. It's interesting. And mm. so both Steve and Tim are very hands-on. There's a sense of material that they're working with and so forth. Has that had an impact on you, do you think? Yes, definitely on my plein air works, but I actually found um, all the different aspects in my painting process, including the speed and the outcome and the form and the technique I use, is quite different after I step back to my studio. It definitely improved my ideas, I, I know that. And Steve, how did you feel this trip in particular changed anything in, in, in your way of thinking? And that sort of came out in the work. When we just plonked myself on the top of one of those mountains, you saw me sort of working really quickly. That was almost a deliberate thing, so I don't have time to think. And all of a sudden, these weird forms and weird shapes that were very foreign and strange to me started to make interesting pictures for myself. So when I go back to the studio, when I went back home, even recently, I went to Italy about two months ago and painted with you in the cloud. That sort of influenced me in a way that it's very hard to paint Italy, which has been painted a million times. Um, so it's my home country. It's my home country, <laughs> but um, the Chinese stuff I actually found was influencing the way that I was working where I was in the middle of Rome and I was just painting a little corner of Tiber River. And I started to realise that I wasn't trying to plan a picture. I didn't care if it didn't work. We only had eight panels up the top of a mountain and uh, we were stuck there for the whole day before we came back down. So I had to do something with them so I didn't think too hard about it. And I think that started to influence my work now. Anne Thompson's a good example who, I th who came here recently too. She doesn't think when she just starts painting. And that's a wonderful thing to do because life is so prescribed, it's so, we've got to analyse everything to the nth degree nowadays, technology's come in, it's all there for you. But painting, that's the wonderful thing. I don't feel like I need to explain it, that it should be explained, you just see it and it is. And if you can do that through painting and not think about it, it's why we do it. It's what makes it special. Now, we've got a show for you, it's here in Hong Kong, Peaks and Valleys. What you'd like to do next in terms of at least the Hong Kong China experience. I want to keep exploring new themes and concepts on my paintings. In the square pieces I brought from Sydney actually mixed in with a few different concepts. The idea is quite similar, which is based on my personal interest of the cross-conversation between the East and the West, and the old and the new, but interested in the different dimensions, like the speaker one is. Because I usually paint a, a big outside vista, and I put a indoor furniture, on top of the outdoor environment. And then I came up with this new idea that I twisted around. So I, I'm gonna set the whole picture of the painting as a room, but I put the outdoor landscape into the room. So that's something new I'm gonna explore. Steve, in terms of looking forward, what would you like to do? Well, actually, I'd like to explore that relationship about the East and the West and understanding Hong Kong a bit better through the people and incorporating that landscape. That might not be the big vista as much anymore, but in even mainland China, more rural areas. You remember when we came down the bottom of the mountain on the last day, we went to the Lantern mm, area, that, that, little, that beautiful little village. Places mm. like that is where you can see the locals at a little bit of a closer connection to their everyday living and incorporating that understanding of how they live from a Western perspective. And in Hong Kong especially too, I'd like to maybe explore the people and how they see their landscape, which is really built up. And so how do they carve out their little lives amongst this huge metropolis? So I'm not sure how I'd approach that, but spending just more time and actually starting to hone that down, as we keep saying in a way, and actually get some really good pictures out of understanding uh, people's real lives, more so than the touristy idea of Hong Kong or mainland China. So I think trying to nut that down in smaller areas and work a little bit more extensively and a little bit more closer. And Tim, is Hong Kong part of your new future plans? Uh, would you like to come back? Well, I'd love to come back. I'll sketch a bit on this trip as well. It was something I've been talking about before I came here. I think some of that will resolve itself in bigger work back in Australia from sketches done here. I think there's sort of twin strands. In the short to medium term, what I've found 
with my building on my language and painting and specifically resolving these landscapes at Zhang Zhejie and, and Wang Shan. That's going to continue at least for the next six months or so. But then after that, I've been a landscape painter and a painter of wilderness, mountainous landscapes. And I do have a sense that that is a lot more open now and that I can bring what I am as a painter to a wider range of things. I've always had this thing with the landscape that it's landscapes that I know incredibly well, that I've been visiting my whole life, you know, a real affinity with and an understanding of on lots and lots of different levels and bringing that into my painting. So yeah, continuing the mountainous landscapes, I've, I've got more to go there and then, um, you know, who, who knows? I mean, that's the beauty of painting. Listen, I think this has been, if nothing more, a lot of fun, hasn't it? It has yeah, been it has amazing. Been fun. We've all been on, on, on lots of these trips and, and the camaraderie in the group is, is a really important part of that. Not just on the trip, but we've all got on you know, so well and it's been such a big part of what makes the trip run smoothly. But even after the trip, like the, the three of us back in Australia, meeting up, talking about our work, doing studio visits to everyone's work, talking about putting the catalogue together, all that sort of thing has been an absolute pleasure. Just thanks for having us, it's been an absolute ball and we hope it, uh, you get as much out of it as we have. Fantastic. Yeah, me too. Well, I'm really appreciated for what you have arranged for the trip, and I really enjoyed it. And I hope the show have, have a very good result of it.